Okay, part two of decoding vortex-based mathematics, my series that aims to decipher Marco Rodin's vortex-based maths using simple terminology. In this part, we'll construct the different possible Rodin number maps in their simplistic form arranged as a 2D grid. This is just an intermediary step to applying the number map to the toroid. We could just skip directly to applying the numbers to the toroidal number map, but understanding a few methods of applying the numbers in a simple grid before applying them to the toroid is helpful to get our heads around the complete process. In the next videos, we learn how to draw the toroid using a compass and straight edge before we move on to how we can apply the number map to the toroid skin. And the process I'm giving here is based on research into a paper, The Roden Number Map and Roden Coil, published by Marco Roden and Greg Volk in 2010. And also, again, I'll reference the videos of Tom Barnett uh, a little later on. And I need to make it clear that I'm only referencing the parts in this paper and the video that talk about arranging the numbers as a 2D grid, which leads into arranging them on the 2D, 2D toroidal number map. So I believe all the parts in the paper and the video that are about curving the 2D number map into a cylinder and applying them to a phi ratio of a toroid model to be incorrect. So we've previously tried applying these methods to designs and prototypes and it's not possible to precisely apply VBM to the toroid in this way, at least as far as I know. Uh, we've discussed this with Marco himself and he agrees that this way of wrapping the number map around a cylinder to form the toroid is not accurate, uh, although this method is still used most uh, by people working on physical coil prototypes. Using this method can yield some interesting results, but I believe it doesn't fully utilize VBM and it ends up producing a coil with somewhat arbitrary proportions, close to the natural geometry of the toroidal uh, magnetic field, but no cigar. The argument's traditionally been that we can't get any closer than this, and this is perhaps true if we're only using copper wire to make coils. But if we employ more flexibility in the materials we utilize in our physical toroid designs, as I'll be in the future, then we can ignore what is practical when only using copper wire and attempt to design a model that's accurate to the theory as physically possible. But anyway, back to forming our 2D number map grid using the methods presented by Marco and Greg in this paper. So our goal here is to place our nine numbers arranged in a grid so that all the patterns, sequences, and number pairs that we found in the upper cipher remain fully intact when we look to find them within the geometric configuration of the grid. And remember that you can check out the references in the description to explore the source material for this presentation. So first, as a simple starting point, we can form a degenerate one by one Roden number map like so. Um, and this is directly from this paper. So we refer to this as a degenerate Roden number map because it doesn't contain the symmetry and ge geometrically aligned patterns present in VBM. However, it serves as a starting point from which we can derive our non-degenerate Roden number maps from. So essentially, to explain the construction of this degenerate number map example, uh, the numbers 1 to 9 are arranged in repeating sequences of 1 on the x and y axes to form the frame of the rectangle. The final row of the x and y axes are both the same uh, as the first of each, which simply shows the endlessly repeating nature of the pattern without us drawing it endlessly. So we can then flesh out our one by one pattern by filling in each row in the grid by adding one to the previous figure each time from left to right and writing the result. And we're only using mod nine here, so every time we get to nine in the sequence, we go back to one. So then to flesh out the grid further uh, and add the rows in between, we add more nines, uh, diagonally staggered to the left down and down a row from every existing nine. And then we can use these new reference points to fill in the rest of the staggered rows. So just start with nine and add one as you go to the left or subtract one as you go to the right until the number map is complete. So by doing this, we've formed a degenerate one by one number map that doesn't actually contain the patterns and sequences we're looking for but it serves as the first step of one of the simplest methods to derive our final non-degenerate Roden number maps. So Marco and Greg's paper explains that there's only three ways we can ultimately arrange the numbers so that we're gonna be able to find all of the patterns, sequences, and equations of VBM in a theoretically endlessly repeating 2D grid. So we can find all three of these functional Roden number map possibilities by shifting this degenerate map around a little. 
So first we should construct a second degenerate map. That's the vertical mirror image of the first one we derived. Uh, and this gets us a little closer to our goal. And if you want to find out all the different degenerate repeating or mirrored degenerate number map possibilities you can derive uh, to manually narrow things down to the final three that are functional, you can go ahead and check out the paper I've referenced, which goes through this in a little bit of detail. But in this video, I'll just skip on to show the functional number maps which we can derive by shifting the rows around in this mirrored degenerate number map. Uh, we'll later be able to use the three accurate Roden number maps to form our three different accurate toroid number maps, which we call Shear 1, Shear 3, and Shear 7. But I'll get to that a bit later when we come to it. So on to the non-degenerate Roden number maps. Possibility 1, the 2, 7 number map. So to get here, taking our degenerate mirrored number map, we shift the numbers of the first, fourth, and seven rows below the top, three steps to the right. And remember that the last horizontal and vertical columns just represent the infinitely repeating nature of the pattern. So they don't count here and we skip the last column and move directly to the first column when moving numbers in the primary rows, as you can see here on this illustration. So then we shift the numbers in the second, fifth, and eight rows, uh, from the top row, uh, three steps to the left. Then we take the next line down as our new reference point and we repeat the same operation of moving the numbers three steps to the left and right on the first, fourth and seventh and the second, fifth and eighth lines below it again using that same pattern. We can also refer to this possible arrangement as the one by two map because we can see that all the numbers in the top row increase by one horizontally and the numbers in the first column now increase by vertically by two. So this is the first possible non-degenerate number map of the three that we can obtain. So we'll now go through the others. Uh, this is possibility two, the uh, one eight Roden number map or the one by four. So this time we do the exact opposite. Starting with our mirrored degenerate one by one number map again, we take the first, fourth and seventh rows from the top row and we shift them three steps to the left in the same fashion that we did in the last example, but just in reverse this time. And then we take the second, fifth, and eight rows from the top row and shift them three steps to the right again. And then we repeat that pattern again, just as we did in the first example. And this time we can see that the numbers in the first row still increase by one each step. And then the numbers in the first column now increase in steps of four. So hence this can also be called uh, the one by four map. And then possibility three, is our four five or our four by two Roden number map. And our third possibility can't be derived from shifting around the rows of the mirrored degenerate number map like the first two can. But instead, Greg and Marco shifted the columns of the one by two map to obtain the third functional number map. And if you want to see the method for the column shifting, you can just check out the paper. So once the columns of the one by two map have been shifted in a similar fashion again, we obtain our third viable possibility, the four five or the four by two row number map. So in this instance, the first horizontal row increases in steps of four and the first vertical column increases in steps of two. So in all of our possible Roden number maps, uh, we'll find the same sequences of numbers flowing down on the diagonals. So one, two, four, eight, seven, five, and then five, seven, eight, four, two, one, which is just the first sequence in reverse. And then of course the sequence of three, nine, six, six, nine, three. Now, of course, these are only the viable possible number maps we can construct in mod nine. We can use mod 26, mod 49, mod 81, and so on instead to construct other viable road and number maps. And there is a small mention of this in Greg and Marco's paper. If someone wishes to take a deeper look and maybe flesh out those maps for us, but I'm not going to go there in this video. So also, this is only one method for obtaining our viable road and number maps, which Marco and Greg outlined in their paper. So Tom Barnett gives a completely different method to do it from scratch, using the Fibonacci sequence as his starting point to obtain the number sequence, and then applying it methodically in diagonal lines to a diamond grid, grid map, uh, which ends up like this here. And I've shown the other method in this video only because Tom's video already clearly illustrates his own method. So remember the links in the description for that, and I highly recommend checking it out. 
to help fully grasp the formation of the number mats. And with Tom's examples, we will end up with our same three possible non-degenerate number maps, arranged just as more compact and tidy little diagrams. But they show the same thing as Marco and Greg's maps do, just a little more tidily perhaps. So either way you want to go about it, you can only derive these three possible non-degenerate maps using Mod 9. And I'm not going to go through all the sequences of patterns that can be found in the number map grids in this video. Um, they are there and you're welcome to look for them, but they can be found just the same in the final toroidal number map that we're driving towards in this VBM decoded series. And in the toroidal number map they appear quite spectacularly, so I'm going to save showing the sequences and patterns found in the number maps until after we've applied them to the toroid in the next couple of videos of the series. So if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next part if you'd like to continue following on. We are going somewhere. Thanks for watching.